Hi, I'm Bernd Nussbaumer from macrobeat.co.uk. Uh, today, I would just love to take a little bit of a temperature check on the US data we had uh, this week, which uh, was this sort of GDP, the, the Chicago PMIs. Uh, we will look at some of the Asian stock markets, in particular the Chinese, and then I have a few slides on the currency side as well. If you could go to uh, slide number one. What we see here is the, uh, the recent US GDP data that came out yesterday at 2.6%, which uh, was slightly higher than expected. We ex the market expected a rate of 2.3%, came out at 2.6%. And what we later heard from the uh, Treasury Secretary Minuchin was that actually the data was even a little bit lower due to the shutdown in the, the US government. What is interesting to see is that actually the data is kind of, yes, peaked, but there is no yet really any sort of alarm uh, in terms of the recent data in the GDP and the growth data. On the next slide, what we would see would be the yesterday's Chicago PMI, which is, has seen a tremendous jump from the January data. Of course, there'd be a little bit of give back from the low January data that could well be due to the government shutdown. But as such, you see we are right back to the sort of level we've seen earlier in the year, which is quite interesting from a point that the market continues to be more worried about a slowdown in the US, given the sort of global slowdown that we've seen across the world. But from the data that we just got in the last few days, there's definitely a different picture to the sense that the data is not yet slowing down. So the worry the Fed has might actually be a bit uh, premature. Over to the next slide, where I just want to quickly show what happened in February in the sort of Chinese stock market. Obviously, with China being the sort of big worry in the global space and the sort of depressed data we have in China, the depressed equity market that we have in China. What we see here is really the optimism that sort of came into the market on the back of the trade talks with the US. Every sort of second day we get uh, positive vibes out of China or out of the US that is talking about a trade deal is imminent. The problem here is the market has been rallying quite a bit on the back of this optimism and it is yet to be seen whether the trade deal is really as good as people claim it to be. <clears throat> what is interesting on this chart as well is what you do see the blue line and the green line. This is the MSCI Asia Pacific Index and the World Index. So clearly the Chinese equities have totally decoupled from the sort of slower trend of global stocks, which again is a lot of uh, optimism in there for this trade deal. So there is obviously some worries about a buy the room and sell the fact in uh, uh, incident in, in that sense that we might just have a little bit too much uh, uh, optimism in the, those prices. Over on the next slide, we see sterling. Sterling is obviously a animal on itself right now with all the talk in, on, the, on the Brexit. Uh, obviously with the latest development, it does look like the uh, no deal Brexit could be taken off the table. That is really why sterling has rallied. The market asset managers, pension funds have been probably underweight sterling for the last two years ever since we had the vote, which really means that now that the no deal Brexit starts to look very unlikely, it is really a case of high, how high can sterling actually rally. There is still obviously next week or actually in two weeks time when we have all the votes to go through. So uh, right now to me it looks like as if actually Mrs May could win her deal. Uh, the ERG on the race mark start to kind of sending out signals uh, that they could accept some form of, of a, a deal, which probably means they're too worried that actually uh, if Mrs May loses the deal, we could actually have no Brexit at all. So I wouldn't be surprised if we really do get a deal, uh, you know, almost by surprise. On the last slide, I would show you the dollar yen. Dollar yen is just really rallying to the key areas up here. Uh, it's not far from this sort of 112 area with a lot of optimism on the risk side in foreign exchange. So a break of the 112 area would really put us right back into the sort of optimism we have seen before uh, in the FX market in terms of risk. This would really be it for me for the week and I hope you have a fantastic week and see you again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.